and as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandment, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him, and said to him, You lack one thing, go, sell all that you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth who enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible with God. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today's Gospel is from Mark 10 from 17 to 31. This is the famous story of a man or a young man who came to Christ running. He bowed down before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit the eternal life? And our Lord asked him soundly or seemingly a strange question, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. And I want to stop here first to explain this part because a lot of people may misunderstand it. This man is calling God, or calling our Lord, good teacher. And I want you to be very clear about that. The word good, in the literal sense where the Greek is written, was actually only meant to be called about God. No one can be called the good shepherd, the good Lord, the good teacher, except God. The word good is not just, oh, he's very good, he's less good, no, but righteous, full of righteousness. You are the righteous teacher. And that's why God is asking him, are you calling me good teacher because you know I am God? Because there is only one good teacher and no one is good but one that is God. So basically our Lord is bringing back the question to him rather than answering him directly. Young man, are you calling me good because you believe I am God? Or you are coming just words without thinking? And that's the first lesson of this paragraph. When we name God anything, our Lord, the Pantocrator, uh, the Almighty, the Good Shepherd, the Good Savior. Do we really mean it? Or it's just we are within the crowd? Believe me, there are so many people can call a person mom or dad, but the mom or dad are so sensitive to how their own children are calling them mom or dad. Our Lord loves to hear our voices, but love it more when we mean what we say, not just we sing what we say. The second part about this passage, that he asked a very important question that we need all to always remember. What shall I do to earn 
the kingdom of God. And this question, our Lord answered it in more than one way. What can I do to earn or shall I do that I may inherit the eternal life? I wish this is our desire too. This man had a desire. Seemingly, he wants to go to heaven and he went to the best teacher, in his opinion. Maybe he went to the good teacher, asking him, what is the way? And our Lord said, I am the way. You are coming asking for certain things to be done, but you cannot go to the kingdom of God unless you become on the way and the way becomes in you. We do not go to the kingdom of God based on our good actions and morals and ethics. We go to the kingdom of God because our Lord have bought us with the blood of his own. And then we need to respond to his blood and respond to his salvation through our actions, loving God with all my heart, with all my thinking, with all my abilities. That's the response of man towards the love and the salvation that was done on the cross. Then the kingdom of God becomes a palpable thing. But it's not just there. He is the owner of the kingdom of God. And for us to reach there, you must believe in him, not just do good things. As the Bible said, our Lord one time said, he brought all those servants and said, after you have done all things, say, we are useless servants. We have done what we, are, we must do. And we need to do that, and we need to say that. It's not because of my actions I will inherit God, the kingdom of God, but my actions are necessary and essential as a response to the loving grace and the blood on the cross. And that's what our Lord told them, you need one thing, one thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. And he went sad, because he had great possessions. Our Lord confronted this man with priorities. What are his priorities, this rich man? You want to follow me? You are saying, I'm the good teacher. You say you want to go to the kingdom of heaven, the eternal life. Okay, don't let anything be stumbling block. This man had a problem stumbling him, his love of money, his love of possessions. And this passage was heard with another rich man. After 300 years maybe or 400 years from this point, that was Saint Anthony. And another young rich man, he heard it, took upon himself to do it literally. But does God really is against money? Is God saying there is no one as rich can go to the kingdom of man, kingdom of God? And of course, our Lord answered by saying, Jesus answered and said, children, how hard it is for those who trust in the riches to enter the kingdom of God. Our Lord considered mammon money as a blessing. He was even surrounded by some rich men and ladies who were helping his service, his mission, who were supporting his mission and feeding the poor and all of that. But the big difference between a rich man like Nicodemus and another rich man like Caiaphas or Anas, one of them was trusting the money and the other one was using the blessing of the money for the glory of God. That's a big difference. Our Lord 
wants us to make the money to be used to edify and help his people. But there is another person who is worrying about money, concerning about money, looking at the stocks. Every, if it goes down, he is down. If it goes up, he is happy. And then he becomes greedy and he doesn't want to help his family and his people around. And he can't enjoy life because he's concerned and worried. And after all, are you here to be the master of the money or the slave of the mammon? And that's what our Lord says. Leave, carry your cross and follow me. Leave means not be poor or leave all your possession, but don't let the money drive you, but let the cross drive you. And while you're making the cross drive you, you are now getting the money to be just the wheel, but not the driver. The driver is you, and the Christ is next to you, telling you where to go, making the right moves. But the wheels could be the money. But if you make the money the driver, then Christ is not sitting in this passage, in this vehicle. So, our Lord said finally a word that some people are not understanding. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And there were many explanations for this verse, difficult verse. What is the eye of a needle? And why God, God is speaking about the camel? He's saying it's easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle rather than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And the explanation for this, that there was a door to enter Jerusalem, a gate called the eye of a needle. It's a very tiny little door, and they only allow camels to go inside after they empty out any of the possessions on the camel's back. So the camel to go inside has to kneel down and to enter without possessions. And an idea is practically that they didn't want these camels to come after hours carrying stuff into the town just in case if there are any bad stuff going in. But the symbolic meaning, you cannot go to kingdom of God carrying possessions. You will live as naked as you were born. If you keep carrying, you can't come to God. You need to come to God after you empty out the carriages, the packages that you carry. So in summary, this very fine passage speaks about this fine rich man who has two good things. He said, you are a good teacher. And our Lord told him, I hope you meant it because only one who is good. Second, he asked a very important question that we always need to prioritize. Is the kingdom of God is important to me? And I ask every day myself, am I still on the way? in the way, on the way, and the way in me to the kingdom of God. And number three, what is the value of money and possessions in my life? Is it in front or in the back? Is it in the driver's seat or, in, or as a wheel of a car? And if the driver's seat, then Christ is not in it. Glory be to God forever. Amen.